Hi, it's Sherry. Welcome back to my channel, Canterbury Cottage. Today I have 15 super simple and super cheap DIY projects for you. Many of them are patriotic in nature, but could easily be adapted to another theme if you don't happen to decorate for the 4th of July. I'm sitting out on my patio today because I've added something new this week. So I hope you'll stick around until the end of the video to see what it is that I have added to my patio. Well, we have a lot to get through, so let's get started. I love thrifting unusual pots for plants to use both indoors and outdoors. This fern was saved from my patio last year and I just barely kept it alive all winter. I put some packing styrofoam in the bottom of this larger pot so that I didn't have to use so much potting soil. Then I just added a hosta plant that I had dug up from my yard. I thought these metal stars would make cute decoration for the pots, so I cut them apart using my angle grinder but you could just bend them back and forth and eventually break them off. I used a premium super glue to glue a star to one of the pot lids to stick in the pot for additional decoration. I think the rusty stars and the blue and white enamelware make a cute combination. For my next plant container, I printed out this vintage image of a flag. All of today's images are linked in the description box below. I decoupaged the flag to the front of a plain thermos that I already owned. I decided to put artificial flowers in this old thermos. I put some styrofoam down in the bottom and then stuck in some geranium stems. I hot glued some ribbon around the top where the lid had been. I put a little potting soil in the lid and added a plant to it, too. I also like to add miniature flags to things, like I did to these flowers that I stuck in an old red toolbox. After the 4th of July, I'll remove the flags and add something else instead. If you've been watching my channel, you know that I love books. So I bought these colorful books for 99 cents each, at Goodwill. I printed out a patriotic image and decoupaged it to the smallest of the three books. I used a little goof off to remove the title from along the edge of the book, but I had to use some sandpaper to get the title off of the white book. To create a colorful bow to tie the books together, I ripped a strip off of a Dollar Tree scarf. To add some additional interest, I also tied some twine around the books and then unraveled the ends. I think for $4, this makes really cute patriotic decor. If you're going to be setting off fireworks, why not make something cute to hold your matches? I decoupaged a vintage matchbox label to the front of this 99 cent Goodwill tin and I hot glued the striker to the back of the tin pitcher. I had a second tin pitcher, and so I decided I would put toothpicks in it. So I printed out a vintage label from an old toothpick box and decoupaged that to the front of this tin. These projects are so easy and so cute. Nothing says 4th of July like a flag, so I decided to frame one. Using glue stick, I attached brown craft paper to the cardboard backing in an old frame. I removed the flag from its pole by removing the staples, and then I used a little glue stick to hold the flag to the cardboard backing. I also printed out the image of the lyrics to America the Beautiful, which I cut out and laid on top of the flag. I put everything back in the frame and bent down the original nails to hold everything in place. I think it looks like a prized antique, 
even though the flag is actually not that old. So let's make something to display even more flags. I took this old tin can and painted it with Waverly Cashew chalk paint. I applied two coats and then lightly distressed it with some sandpaper. I then printed out another vintage patriotic image, which I decoupaged to the side of the tin can. I soaked my flags in coffee for several hours, but honestly, the fabric did not really absorb the stain. So I brushed on some watered down antiquing wax and that worked great. I put some styrofoam in the bottom of the can and then added some flags. I also tied a little piece of ribbon around the top. I think this makes a cute display next to my framed flag. I found this very sturdy but very dated stool for $6.99 at Goodwill. I thought it would look great in a colorful color of paint for summer. I unscrewed the top and taped off the woven seat. I also added some glue to help tighten the corner joints that had come loose. I saw this coastal blue chalk paint at Walmart and decided to give it a try. I applied two coats of the paint and when it was fully dry, I distressed it using 220 grit sandpaper. I reattached the seat and then I applied a coat of clear wax. The wax really changed the color of the paint, making it a much deeper blue, which I actually preferred. I don't need any more footstools inside, so I'm going to use this as a plant stand on my front porch. I bought what I think is a utensil holder for a couple dollars at Goodwill, but it was missing its containers. But the Dollar Tree glass jar candles fit perfectly. I gave it a couple coats of white spray paint. My candle jars were empty because I had used the wax on a previous candle project, so I cut decorative paper out to fit inside each jar. You could decoupage the paper on the jars, but I like the idea of being able to change it out for different seasons and holidays. You could leave the glass jars plain and add water and live flowers or plants. Because the jars are so tall, I shoved some grocery sacks down in the bottom before I put utensils in. I think this caddy is really handy, for backyard barbecues, or just to use in your kitchen. It could be used to hold so many different things. Okay, this next project is the easiest and the cheapest. All you need to do is find three sticks or three pieces of wood and glue them together in the shape of the number four. I used three pieces of driftwood which I cut a bit on my miter saw to get the length that I wanted. I used super glue, but wood glue would also work really well. I decided to use that Dollar Tree scarf for another project. I cut out several small triangles from the blue scarf and also from a second red scarf. I used hot glue to attach the triangles to a long piece of twine. I alternated the colors to add interest. You could cut out larger triangles to create a larger banner, but there's just something so cute about a little tiny banner draped across things. Here's another project using things that you probably already have. Gather together some empty spools and some ribbon in coordinating colors. Using a little hot glue to hold it in place, glue a short strand of ribbon to each spool. Gather them together in a glass jar or a pretty bowl and they make a very colorful little display one that is easy to change out 
for seasons or holidays. Strands of beads are super popular right now and a very easy way to add a pop of color to a shelf or a tabletop. I like to string my beads on florist wire because it's so easy to feed through the hole of the beads. To change it up a bit, I ordered these star-shaped beads from Amazon to add to the red and white beads that I already had. To create a tassel, I wrapped twine around my hand about 15 times. I also added in two different types of ribbon. I attached the twine to the beads by using the wire sticking out from one end of the bead strand. I looped the wire around the twine and fed it back through one or two beads and then twisted it tight. I cut the loop of twine across the bottom and then adjusted the ribbons a bit. I twisted another piece of twine about an inch from the top and then tied it off, tucking the ends down into the tassel. And then I trimmed up the ends to make everything even. Because I used red and white beads, but not blue, this could be used again at Christmas time. Here's another super simple idea. Sort buttons out by color and display them in cute little glass jars. I also threw my extra star beads into a glass jar. For this project, cut a piece of plain cotton fabric to fit on a piece of printer paper. I used cardstock for extra support. Tape the fabric to the cardstock. Run the fabric through your printer using images that you like. I have an inkjet printer, so I let the ink dry for about an hour. I cut some additional cotton fabric in the same sizes, and then I sew them together to create little pillows. I leave a small opening across the bottom so that I can stuff the pillows. I sprinkled some essential oil on the stuffing from an old bed pillow. When the pillows were stuffed, I hand-stitched the opening closed, but you could sew it on the machine or even glue it closed. For my last project, I removed all of the fabric from an old lampshade that I wasn't using anymore. I wrapped the lampshade with clothesline I had purchased at Dollar Tree. Going in circles around the shade, I wrapped the rope around each metal rod as I approached it, and then went to the next metal rod, wrapped around it, and went to the next metal rod, and so forth. When the body of the shade was done, I wrapped the metal rods around the bottom circumference of the shade. If you want to use this as a lampshade, wrap the top circumference in the same way. But because I wanted to use this as a basket, I wrapped the top using the same technique as I had on the body of the shade. This created a base for my basket. I used exactly two skeins of clothesline to create this basket, so it only cost $2, and it would be perfect to use outdoors. If you like to make your own faux floral arrangements, you'll want to invest in a package of wood picks. They can add length to shorter stems and make it easier for flimsy stems to stick into your styrofoam. Well, I told you today's projects would be super simple and super cheap. I hope you'll give a few of them a try this summer. Well, that's all for today, except to show you the new addition to my patio. Thank you.